Howdy, howdy, everyone. The time is 2.57 p.m. It is April 10th. This is another update from Great Lakes Weather regarding, yes, in fact, there is a potential for severe weather on Wednesday in the Great Lakes region, especially Indiana. Indiana is likely going to be the main target of severe weather on Wednesday, but it looks like Lower Michigan could get into some of the action as well. In fact, this action could spread as far north as the Upper Peninsula as well. We're going to look at all the models, give you an idea of how this storm is going to develop and move in. The SPC has given enough confidence to say, okay, this storm might actually be strong enough to bring severe weather to the Great Lakes region. So we're going to get into the models, the prediction by the SPC, and we're just going to break it all down. So before we get into that, I want you to make sure that you are subscribed to all the platforms. Now is the time, now that we actually have severe weather coming. Make sure you're checking us out on YouTube, Instagram, True Social, Twitter, Facebook. If you live in Southwest Lower Michigan, text that um, little tag to 81010 and you will be able to get connected scan that QR code and it'll take you directly to the website where there's easy access to all of the places you can get connected to us alrighty we're gonna get right into it because there is a lot of ground to cover at this time alright so here is the convective outlook for today again not really impacting the Great Lakes region other than the fact that we will see like a few showers and thunderstorms overnight tonight um, and it's not really gonna be anything significant from this but there is going to be a tornado risk in parts of southwest Missouri not really a significant one but the potential for tornadoes and damaging winds does exist this is kind of the beginning of the development of that very good environment we're gonna have for severe weather out in the plains later on coming in the next couple of days especially Tuesday and Wednesday some people are saying it could be one of the bigger outbreaks of tornadoes we've had in the past three years in that area so it's gonna be pretty decent little outbreak that we're gonna see in that region let's go to the day two outlook this is day one again minor severe weather risk in parts of southern Missouri not really anything for the Great Lakes region other than a few thunderstorms day two we see that expansion southwest Indiana looks like gonna see some severe weather potential Arkansas Texas southeastern Oklahoma as well and then we also have more thunderstorm potential in parts of lower Michigan and the lower Great Lakes region once again, all right? So we're going to see multiple rounds of showers and thunderstorms over the next couple of days before we hit the main event, which will likely bring that severe weather. Temperatures are going to be warming up. We can't really have strong thunderstorms like this without some form of heat, which we're going to have a nice buildup of heat from the Gulf of Mexico, resulting from a nice south wind that's going to develop. So we are going to really, as the more, the more moisture and heat that we get from the system, the greater our chances of seeing severe weather especially if the sun tends to stay out during the day so we're gonna check that we're gonna make sure to keep an eye on that as it moves through next day day three this will be Tuesday this is where things really start to get interesting okay enhanced risk for severe weather potential for some very significant severe weather especially on the northern edge of this in parts of the triple point Nebraska Iowa um, Missouri that location right there could see some pretty significant tornadoes. The significant tornado parameter parameters are very high for in that area for um, tornado development. So it's going to be pretty significant. Again, those storms may last into reaching the Great Lakes region as well, southwestern Ohio and most of southern Indiana. Not looking super significant on Tuesday, but it will bring some activity that could produce a little bit of severe weather in in Indiana. Okay, so not really going to survive the lake. The lake also is still very cold, which means it'll drive out some of that energy that the storms have taking it in from that heat the the ground level is not going to be super warm for the heat for the storms to get fueled off of so they're not really going to stick around as they get past the lake which is beneficial for the people in Michigan but again there's that potent that hatched area for significant severe weather possible in parts of the plains um, pretty decent threat as of yet but it looks like the, the environment is just perfect for tornado development over the next few days. So we're going to want to just keep an eye on that. Day 4 through 8 outlook. Let's take a look at that real quick. Oh, my goodness. There we are. So let's pull this up. All righty. So this is a 30% risk. That means really an enhanced risk as of right now, a likely chance for severe weather in this region along the Mississippi River Valley. Um, right on the entrance of the Ohio River into the Mississippi River. And then you got this slight area 
which we'd say thunderstorms are possible, severe the weather is possible, right in this region here. That includes all, almost all of Indiana, parts of southwest Ohio, southwest lower Michigan. These regions could see the potential for some damaging wind gusts, large hail, maybe an isolated tornado or two. So a couple things that are going to have to keep an eye on. Southwest Indiana could probably see quite a bit more because they're in they're closer to that centralized area of severe weather development. So this is what the SBC is currently putting out. We're going to get more information about this threat from the SBC um, overnight tonight or into early in the morning. We'll provide updates on that. But I do anticipate on chasing in northern Indiana and southwest lower Michigan once this moves in. I'm not going to go any much farther south because I don't trust my car enough to go that far. So we're just going to stay in the southwestern portion of the Great Lakes region right around here. So this is what the SBC is out. Um, let's take a look if there's any interesting things that have been described in here. Substantial organized severe thunderstorm threat. That's going to be down off to the southwest. Instability should be present ahead of the cold front to support surface-based thunderstorms. We're going to see that in the models once we get through those. So let's actually just dive right into those right now. We're going to look at two different models. We're going to look at the ECMWF, the Euro model. And then we're also going to look at the NAM because the NAM also provides the soundings that will give us a beneficial idea of the environment in the atmosphere for these storms. So let's go to the Euro real quick. Let me pull this out. Before we get to that, actually, I wanted to show you another interesting graphic that was given to me. So this right here is what we call, it's basically a model that measures the potential for significant tornadoes. And it is pretty high, um, 90 in parts of lower Arkansas, northern Louisiana, pretty significant. Here in the Great Lakes region, especially Indiana, looks like we've got a 70%, um, and then 65, 60% in parts of the, so our tornado potential is definitely there. The environment and the atmosphere is fitting to where we could see some pretty decent tornadoes develop in parts of the Great Lakes region. So um, anything with a 65% or higher has a 75% chance of significant tornadoes, and that extends all the way into um, northern central Indiana, and then 60 for parts of southern lower Michigan, and then most of the state of Indiana is underneath that as well. So this, this is going to be something we want to keep an eye on because it does look like we do have the, a decent potential for some severe weather from this system that may be added to the latest developments from the SBC. So we're going to look at that. Let's take a look at Thursday's graphic as well. I'm not sure if it's going to load. That's unfortunate. But I did want to see that. But anyways, basically the the next one would show this potential moving off to the east in parts of Ohio. So again, this may progress into the eastern part of the United States as well. Just the environment that this cold front is going to be fueled off of is quite impressive. So we're going to get to the models now to take a look at them. All right, so this is the... Let's go to full screen here. There we go. All right, so this is the ECMWF model, the Euro that we use. Right now we've got that nice ridge building in that's giving us the warm temperatures we have today. Temperatures around 60 degrees, which is quite pleasant. Hopefully you've all had a chance to enjoy that. But we're going to progress this eastward to see how these storms are going to evolve um, with the environment that builds in here. So we've got a line of showers and thunderstorms that will initially develop and you, again, that slight risk area overnight tonight is right here in southern Missouri. Severe thunderstorms might develop in that region, and then a line of thunderstorms will accompany that with this weaker low-pressure system that's going to move through ahead of the main system. So that's going to move east-southeast, um, pass on through, maybe some more thunderstorm development as the afternoon comes around. In Arkansas, this is that redevelopment of that potential for severe weather tomorrow. Again, that's not a significant severe weather threat, but it does develop maybe some scattered rain showers in parts of Ohio and Indiana. Let's progress to east southeastward. This is where we want this is what we want to watch right here. This low pressure system is deepening and it's strengthening and it's fuel getting fuel from that nice dot environment that is ahead of it with the gulf moisture and the sunshine that is ahead of it and then also in the winds at the different levels of the atmosphere are going to have a major part to play, especially the mid-level winds are going to have a major influence on the weather. Again, there's a blizzard expected in North Dakota um, on the back side of the system. You see, begin to see that initial line begin to develop this one lone supercell in Missouri. looks like it might pop up based on the models, but a line is really going to develop along this region here of severe thunderstorms, and you'll see that in just a minute. That warm front's going to have some stronger storms on it as well. Again, that environment fueling them. 
and then there's that development of those potentially severe thunderstorms ahead of a rain band that is developed in front of it. These storms are expected to be severe um, with all severe hazards, most likely stronger. The, this is going to be a pretty decent severe weather event for this entire area. Okay, so got that line moving in right there and it begins to weaken but it does still show potential for severe weather on its backside. Behind that we got some cooler weather with 40s and maybe even yes unfortunately more wintry weather so that's something you probably don't want to hear but severe weather will be before that. So that's what the ECMWF is putting out. I'm going to go to a single image model because I want to take a look at some of the nationwide views for it. So we got to find our place back to where we were I'd say right about here. There's our line of initial development. Let's look at the severe weather potential. And I cannot because I don't have premium. That's unfortunate. I can look at the bulk shear though. <laughs> so let's look at that. There's a, some ample wind shear on the back side of the cold front. Not really able to see what's happening um, on the front of it. So here's the mid-level winds. Again, the mid-level winds are a little bit farther ahead along with that system. Those mid-level winds are going to fuel the development of those thunderstorms. Soon we're going to take a look at the spin in the atmosphere, how much spin, because that has a major influence on tornado development across the entire area. So that is going to have a heavy part to play. But the mid-level winds, again, kind of at 50 knots, 50 to 60 knots, supporting severe weather. Again, there's that jet stream right there. The jet is also along with this. So really the winds are going to drive much of this system as it moves off to the east-northeast on Wednesday. So. Let's go to a more regional map now. Um, I'm going to close this one out. We'll go to the NAM real quick. So this is the latest run of the NAM. This is the one I can only get right now. I'm going as far out as I can to the very edge to get a measurement of the soundings for the Great Lakes region. So the, it, the NAM doesn't really depict the, um, the potential development of the clusters of severe thunderstorms super well. There should be a line of thunderstorms that develops ahead of this. So that's going to be something to keep an eye on. But let's look at some soundings ahead of the given front here. PDS tornado, That's that means particularly dangerous situation. Looking at the hodograph, we've got that classic, that classic hook that we look for with these soundings right here. This shows the potential for tornadoes. It's a pretty nice hook there. And then you've got some, you've got low cloud bases and just a lot of different ingredients coming together here for the potential for severe weather development. Now, if we progress this forward towards when it approaches our area, the very last part of our model run, this, you've got it right here. Let's get a sounding for Kalamazoo County. Again, there's that tornado risk, that hook that you look for with these soundings right here. You've got that nice hook going through and then the cloud bases are a little bit more elevated than in the sounding back in Illinois, which gives it a little bit of a lesser threat. But let's take a look at a better view of this. You can see all the different photographs on here, those classic hooks indicating the potential for tornado development in these areas. Again, they're pretty, pretty decent, pre much more much more seen in parts of Indiana. Indiana is going to be under the gun. And then even southwest lower Michigan and eastern Michigan in some spots it has those nice photographs as well that show the potential for severe weather development. And then this is also on the back side of this you have the CAPE values. CAPE again the measure of instability in the atmosphere, the heating that took place from the sunlight, the Gulf moisture, and all that coming together to produce severe weather. Again it's much going to be much more deeper down in parts of Indiana and then Southwest Michigan has also some CAPE levels of over 500, which is not too much, but given the thermodynamic environment we have, it's not really going to matter too much with that. Let's take a look at the holicity in the atmosphere, measurement of the potential for tornadoes. Um, pretty energetic in parts of Indiana, even Southwest Michigan. Storm relative holicity is going to show us the amount of spin that's going to be in these storms, the amount of spin that's going to be in the atmosphere. Pretty significant numbers here. You have numbers of 440 all across parts of Indiana, Eastern Ohio, significant numbers. Um, that is going to be a major factor in the development of severe weather as well. That's going to bring the potential for tornadoes. So we're going to have a nice long line ahead of this cold front. 
and a few tornadoes could develop along that line and then damaging wind gusts and small hail will also remain possible with the system primary threats are damaging winds and tornadoes for sure given this very impressive environment that we have with the given system let's take a look at the height of the cloud bases cloud bases are pretty low here you got cloud bases down to 80 meters in some spots and then these cloud bases are quite high so it's not really gonna so the lower the cloud base the better the chance that a spin-up tornado could occur and these cloud bases are quite low in this little along in the head of the cold front so this is a very good setup for severe weather much more off to the west than it is off into the Great Lakes region but it is something to just be aware of as it progresses through the area so there's a lot on here on the table but for all of the upcoming information make sure you subscribe to our text alerts go to our website at I'll post it in the description but go to our website make sure you subscribe to all of our different platforms because there's a lot to keep an eye on with this system and I'm gonna be providing updates on social media throughout the week I'm on spring break my planned chase region is going to be this region right here northern Indiana southern Michigan where supercell values are close to, are between three and five which is not terribly high but it does support the potential to see some pretty good storms develop and the tornado parameters are above one indicating the potential for tornadoes much higher down in parts of Illinois Indiana so lots a lot put together to produce this weather event so Make sure to stay connected, and I will be back on next moment I get some pretty valuable information that's worth noting. So hopefully this video is helpful. Make sure to like and subscribe, share it with your friends, and I will see you all later on.